So Voyage of the Sunken City was announced in March of 2022, March 17th of 2022 to be exact, and it introduced a lot of interesting concepts here. It introduced Dredge, it introduced the Naga Tribe, and it also introduced Colossal Minions being its main stay attraction here. I think the Colossal Minions were the biggest resounding success. Uh, I think in the beginning, I think people were a little bit skeptical on Colossals being too broken. If you could cheat them out fast enough, how do they work whenever you like they swap sides on the board? How do they work whenever they leave the battlefield when one piece leaves the battlefield and so on and so forth? But I think overall, people generally love them, and I think in the future we will see more. I don't think it's something that they need to do every expansion or even every standard cycle year, but I think something it's something that we're going to see probably like once every two years or so here because they don't want too much of it in the standard cycle. But Voyage of the Sunken City came in at one of the roughest points in Hearthstone's history, and we're going to get into why that was right now here and that's partially because of forged in the barrens which came out an entire year before it was very very underpowered and if you realize here hearthstone has gone into a very strange cycle of every two years or so we'll have an expansion that doesn't seem to make too much of an impact here we had it in forged in the barrens where there wasn't a whole lot a powerful stuff going on we had uh this like mage hero power package but this wasn't relevant until they buffed wildfire when wildfire first came out it was two mana and we also had a secret paladin deck because sword of the fallen had three durability on it and was completely busted at that point in time and needed to be nerfed we also had first day of class for paladin which was from the school of Mance academy expansion uh a set that we'll probably talk about in another video at another given point in time uh but other than that what other thing hurt hearthstone during the year of 2021 into 2022 well one of the worst expansions in hearthstone's history was united in stormwind and man whenever this was first announced in 2021 in july of 2021 people thought this was going to be great it had quest in it what other set had quest in it that people loved saviors of el doom had quest in it and those quests were very very uh they weren't linear they weren't exactly moving ahead to end the game or make an impact they kind of gave you a prize that was not to prolong the game but they kind of went along with the, the quest itself and these quests were a little bit different these quests were definitely more linear these quests were built to end the game they even talked about it in like the design concept here how how these were going to be a little bit different and yada 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 but the problem with that was most of the games were decided by turns five or six and they also had nothing really implemented with interacting with the quest itself so that created a big problem in design space in gameplay not a lot of people liked it and a lot of people decided to just leave the game entirely during this point uh, one of the most noticeable, you know, creators that left the game was Raren uh, during this time here. Raren ended up taking a hiatus uh, from Hearthstone, and it, that was a creator that I had the, like just recently picked up and gotten into with uh, Forged in the Barrens. And Forged in the Barrens meta in the beginning wasn't very healthy because of Paladin, and we had a Deck of Lunacy running absolutely rampant during those times uh but other than that here these quests just were not and there was three in particular that were a big cause of concern for the meta here and that was sorcerer's gambit the mage one the demon seed which was the warlock one and this was a problem in wild and standard at that time 
And the last one, which didn't become a problem until probably a little bit later on, was the Finn Dwar Dwarven District, which also became a problem in both Standard and Wild during that time. There was just no way to interact with these. You literally were rolling rock, paper, scissors on your, your matchups, and if you hit right, you're almost 80% probably or more to win those matchups here if you were getting a good matchup. So, Alterac Valley was not a terrible expansion in the slightest. I think Alterac Valley did a really good job. They introduced, you know, more hero cards, which were very powerful. Each one of them, you know, did very powerful things to combat this. And some of them even tried to make, like, the board actually matter. The problem was, is Alterac Valley just could not fix the damage by itself of what United and Stormwind had already created. Uh, Alterac Valley's meta was a little bit better, but it definitely was revolved around how much mana cheat can we do? How, you know, how much broken, uninteractive stuff can we do? Uh, Druid getting to 20 mana by like turns, you know, eight or turn seven or eight here, or having 15 mana you know, early on in the game while your opponent is, like, sitting there with six mana just twiddling their thumbs waiting for you to end your turn. And it was just not an overall great experience. Um, I think one of the design leads for Voyage of the, the Sunken City even made a post uh, stating that, you know, she wanted to focus this entire year of 2022 on more, like, board matter gameplay and Voyage of the Sunken City semi-succeeded in that here, and we're going to get into that right now. This set is great. I thought this set was fantastic. As I said, it was announced on March 17th of 2022, which was a little bit late because it did not have a very long uh, reveal schedule, which I actually liked because that meant there was less of a gap. There was less time to become less excited about the expansion coming out. And initially, it did not really resonate with me. I thought, oh man, Nagas? Like, alright, whatever. But as time went along and they introduced, you know, they started showing some of the, uh, the mechanics of the expansion and stuff like that, I really, really got, I was sold. I was sold on it here. I thought a lot of good things came from this expansion. Uh, like, even if we just sit here and look through the expansion set as a whole here, it really, really, like, there's so many cards here that I've seen play, that are even seen play in today's standard, which is uh, a good, that's a good sign for the game itself here right now. Yes, there's some definitely busted stuff. Titans have, has just released at the time of making this video, uh, and there's definitely some busted things going on. But it, there's a little bit for everyone to do, and that's that's something that's good to see in the game, in today's game at least, here right now. But what am I talking about here? What am I talking about? What mechanics were there? Well, Dredge. Dredge was a mechanic that I, I can see sticking around even after Voyage rotates out. Semi to how tradable has stuck around. And that's something that we'll get into here in a few minutes here. It's one good thing that came from United and Stormwind, which was tradable here. Dredge came in, and it really reminded a lot of people that has played, you know, that played Magic the Gathering about, like, Scry. You're filtering your draw. Uh, you're not actually drawing the card, but you're at least filtering your draw. And there was always a little bit of interaction, because if your opponent had a card that like shuffled a card into your deck, you could at least mess up their dredge here, and uh, Sir Finley messes up your dredge. There's a few cards in today's standard that still can mess up your dredge, and people get caught off guard. They're like, wait a minute, I dredged something in the top. Uh, what happened to it? And then they, they start looking at the, you know, the actions bar and realize, oh, my deck got shuffled. That's what ended up happening. Um, Nagas were introduced, and while I would say that Nagas was like the, the least important thing, it was just a, an additional tribe in today's Hearthstone, 
It did give us cards like Treasure Guard that looked very innocuous, but have been very key players in a lot of key decks here in today's standard. It was good in Naga Mage. It's been played in Rage Warrior recently, before Titans that came out. It's played in Control Decks as a filler card. And it's just an overall, it's one of those cards that you don't feel bad playing, and you don't feel bad playing against, which is, like, very, very, it's 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 designed. It feels good. Every time I see this card, it feels good. Even if it's on my opponent's side of the board, I'm okay with it. It's not broken or busted. It's just fine. And they, not only that, but Dredge created a lot more design space than what people realized because they could do so much with it. Dredge could draw you a mech if it was a mech. Okay, that, you know, that card sees play. <laughs> I forget what it's called. The, uh, the Trench Dweller dude from Mage, the 2 mana 3 2, uh, sees play in, in Wild. Trench Surveyor, that's it. Uh, so you could draw a mech if it's a mech. Cool. What if it's a beast? Well, Harpoon Gun gives you a cost reduction if it's a beast. That's cool. And this card re reduced it by, by three at one point in time. I think it came out as two and then three. And then they re nerfed it back to two. But uh, this card has always... It's been a staple. It's probably one of Hunter's like best weapons of all time. Um, in the, the, you know, the game of Hearthstone here. So this was great. But what else did Voyage of the Sunken City introduce here? Well, it introduced probably my favorite mechanic of all time, which was Colossal Minions. Now, Colossal Minions, obviously, they came in with, like, appendages. Uh, this one, obviously, is Zylag. This was uh, the very first one that I saw uh, in the spoilers. And... So Colossal plus four, so it comes in with four appendages, which are each stalks that deal two damage at the end of your turn. And obviously the static ability is Zylag gives them a damage increase at the start of your turn. That was really, really cool to see. And I was wondering, like, oh, how are they going to do this? And the art being, like, spread across these pieces made it even more... Um, I'm trying to think of the word here... But it, it made the game even more immersive, I, I would say, here. Because you had this artwork on the board that was spread across multiple game pieces that looked really cool. And each one of them did a cool effect. And each one of them has seen play throughout their time cycle in the standard. Yes, even uh, Kolak has seen play at some point in time. And Azumat saw play during the Festival of Legends and Druid here. So even the bad ones have seen play at some point in time in Standard. Maybe they're not seeing play right now after Titans has come out. But this was such a good game. This was such good design. And it created a new element to the game. Just as locations did for Nathria. And just as Titans are doing right now, Titans remind me a lot of like Planeswalkers from from Magic the Gathering, and that's a very good comparison to do. People will always say like, "Oh, they they copied it." Well, if it works, then you know why why tamper with it? Why tamper with it at all? But this set created uh, much more interest in the game, and we'll go into like some of the top decks. Now, I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up your guys' ass and be like, wow, this was the best set of Hearthstone's history. Stand The standard was healthy because it wasn't. It wasn't entirely healthy, and I'm going to go into that right now here. It wasn't like it fixed everything because the, the most of the meta was ruled by two decks. Control Warrior, which you can see right here, a um, list from Meaty. And the other deck was actually Agro, I think it was, yeah, Agro Naga Demon Hunter. It was just Agro Demon Hunter, let's be real here. Um, that played unnerfed Drek'thar, and this card was busted. This card should have never come out like this. This was, was Call to Arms, uh, but on a 4-4 body here, so... This card was really busted because you get go get you know treasure guard, 
it was really busted with puffer fist that was like the main thing that you always wanted to hit with this deck but uh, these two decks like really ruled the format until they eventually got both got nerfed. Um, I think Warrior ended up getting hit first, the hardest, obviously, and then Demon Hunter got hit. Uh, but th I decided I wanted to do this like little short video talking about this, not you know anything extravagant or anything like that. Uh, but I'm going to probably do this with multiple expansions as time goes along here and as we get further and further out or closer to a standard rotation, which is it's eight months away here. So I got plenty of time to focus on the other two expansions that will be rotating out, which was Castle of Nathria, which is probably another expansion that I really love. I love the theme more than I love the cards themselves. But I did like the expansion as a whole, and March of the Lich King, which, I don't know. I think March of the Lich King, as time has gone along, has been the worst expansion of the 2022 year, but we'll go into that. I don't think it was absolutely horrible or anything like that. I just think it was not as good as the first two uh, from hindsight now here, but... That's going to be it for today's video. Like I said, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It's a little bit different of a, of a take here, but I wanted to try this one out here and see how it went here. So we'll get in back into like maybe some gameplay footage here and there. Uh, I'm streaming over at twitch.tv slash mesohani. I'll put the, the link down in the description below. If you want to go head over there and go ahead and follow me, Usually I'm streaming, you know, three times a week here. It seems like right now is what I'm trying to do. And uh, we'll be going from there here. So have a good day. Have a good rest of your week. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.